Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa <coughs> In this afternoon, I want to uh, go through a short sutta from the Samyutta Nikaya because it's... <coughs> It raises a number of interesting points that are uh, be worth uh, talking about. This is from uh, uh, Samyutta 2, and it's uh, uh, Sutta 61 in that collection. <clears throat> it's called uh, The Uninstructed. Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was dwelling at Sawati in Jetta's Grove and Anathapandika's Park. Bhikkhus, the uninstructed worldlings, might experience revulsion towards this body, composed of the four great elements. He might become dispassionate towards it and, is liber and be liberated from it. For what reason? Because the growth and decline is seen in this body composed of the four great elements. It is seen being taken up and laid aside. Therefore, the uninstructed worldling might experience revulsion towards this body composed of the four great elements. He might become dispassionate towards it and be liberated from it. <clears throat> okay, so this particular paragraph, there's a number of things I'd like to comment on. The uninstructed worldling is Asutva Patujana. Patujana is the word used in the canon for, for everybody who hasn't yet reached stream entry. And this is one of the Buddha's ways of taking language from the culture and giving it a new uh, meaning. Because uh, in mundane usage, Petujina means a common one, a common folk. It literally is the many folk. And the Aryas are the noble ones, or the, the aristocrats. And in the Buddhist discourse, the Aryas are the ones who have attained stream entry or higher, and everyone else is a Petujina. So the true aristocrats are the ones who have attained to stream entry, and everyone else is a Petujina. A Sutwa uh, literally means uh, hasn't heard um, because it, at those times all the teaching was done orally there were no written texts so someone who was learned was said to have heard much rather than a, you know, be well we would might say well read but if he's heard much so someone who hasn't heard much is asked sutwa so so even an Asutva Patujana can develop this passion towards the body because uh, the body, composed of the four great elements, uh, the inherent tendency to decay and disease and foulness in the body is evident to, um, to anyone who looks. It is uh, quite possible to develop that that uh, sense of the of the body. Now the word um, revulsion, uh, though I would um, I would like to point out that that's a problematic translation. That uh, it's the the word is nibida, and. Uh, it's been translated different w different ways in different places. It's one of those words that's very difficult to translate. <clears throat> and it really means um, not like revulsion is too strong because it has too too negative of a connotation. But uh, this passion is better, or although that's more properly reserved for viraga. Uh, disenchantment is sometimes used, and that's. That's quite a good one, I think. The idea is that 
um, the person has reached this stage where they've seen the reality of conditioned becoming, they've seen the three characteristics, they've seen suffering, impermanence, and, and not self, and they're no longer uh, fascinated by conditioned phenomena. They begin to withdraw from it in the mind. And this is a nibida. So the idea of revulsion as a translation you know, does point to the, you know, the turning away of the mind from conditioned phenomena. But it's not really, it doesn't really have that sense of disgust. It's just like, you know, I don't want it. This is problematic. I'm turning away from it. The root of the word uh, comes from the verb vendati, which means to uh, to find or to know, to discover. So it's like when one has discovered the reality of phenomena, then one turns away from them. And the Buddha is saying this uh, insight is uh, possible to be had even before uh, awakening and that it should be you know, is fairly obvious but then he goes on in the next paragraph but bhikkhus as to that which is called mind and mentality and consciousness <clears throat> that is in the Pali uh, citta mano and vijnana three three words for uh, aspects of, of mind that which is called mind, mentality, or consciousness, the uninstructed worldling is unable to experience revulsion towards it, unable to become dispassionate towards it and to be liberated from it. For what reason? Because for a long time this has been held by him, appropriated and grasped thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. Therefore the uninstructed worldling is unable to experience revulsion, nibida, towards it, unable to become dispassionate, viraga, unable to be liberated from it, vimuti. <clears throat> so the, the mind is another matter altogether. And the, uh, the ordinary person, the uninstructed whirling, uh, sutta Pitujana, <clears throat> can't see through the the uh, impermanence and um, imperfection and emptiness of the mind because for a long time, meaning many, many lifetimes, they've grasped it and held on to it as this is me, this is mine, this I am. So there's a sense of identity or uh, self is attached to the mind in a very deep level the person sees their mind as me i am this this is mine <clears throat> it would be better bhikkhus for the uninstructed whirling to take as self this body composed of the four great elements than the mind for what reason because this body, composed of the four great elements, is seen to be standing for one year, for two years, for three, four, five, ten years, for twenty, forty, fifty, for a hundred years, or even longer. But that which is called mind and mentality and consciousness, citta, mano, vijnana, arises as one thing and ceases as another by day and by night. <coughs> So the body has um, at least a, an evident continuity over the course of decades, although it obviously changes. You know, the, uh, there is a more obvious continuity in the, in the form than there is with the mind, which is momentarily changing depending on the object it takes. Uh, elsewhere in another sutta, the Buddha makes the same point by saying that um, at attachment to the uh, to the to the 
mind as an abiding self is 16 times more foolish than attachment to the body because the mind changes 16 times faster than the body. That's a, a, a rare allusion in the suttas to a principle from Abhidhamma that one mind moment, um, you know, that one bodily moment, one physical moment takes 16 mind moments. So they're working you know, on a different time scale. The body's impermanence is 16 times slower than that of the mind. The mind is flickering very quickly. The commentary to, to this uh, paragraph actually says that uh, in a single in a single finger snap there are thousands of kotis of mind moments. A koti is a number in ancient India meaning ten million. Um, so that this is a this is not to be taken I think too literally because the ancient Indians had a great love of <laughs> big numbers. Yeah. But certainly the a mind moment is considered to be extremely brief. <clears throat> uh, certainly many, many in in a, in a single blink of the eye or snap of the fingers. Then he goes on with a, a, a simile. Uh, just as a monkey roaming through the forest grabs hold of one branch, lets go and grabs another, and lets go and grabs still another, so that which is called mind, mentality, and consciousness arises one thing and ceases as another by day and by night. <clears throat> so it's the, an image that often is used to uh, represent the um, restlessness of the mind flicking, flitting from object to object. It's like a monkey jumping through the tree branches and grasping one object after another. <clears throat> Therein bhikkhus, the uninstructed noble disciple attends closely and carefully to the dependent origination itself. Thus, when this exists, that comes to be. With the arising of this, that arises. When that does not exist, that does not come to be. With the cessation of that, that ceases. <clears throat> so the dependent arising is brought up. It's the Pakicca Samupada. So one of the central teachings of the Buddha, that things arise according to causes and conditions and not otherwise. And the general formula is given here. This is one of the places it's stated explicitly. When this exists, that comes to be, etc. Which is really just a, um, a formal expression of the idea that everything arises according to causes. Everything is dependent on something else. There is no uh, object anywhere that is <clears throat> completely self-sustaining, completely self-generated. Everything is just a product of other uh, other actions, other other uh, dynamic causes, which themselves are dependently arisen. <clears throat> And then he goes on to state the, um, the 12 nidanas, you know, the, the full explication of the dependent origination as it plays out in human life. And it's abbreviated in this, uh, in this text. That is, with ignorance is conditioned, volitional formations comes to be, with volitional formations consciousness, etc. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. So there, there are actually 12 stages to this dependent origination that the Buddha uses to explain uh, our condition as human beings. Um, and it often uses this phrase, uh, thus this whole mass of suffering comes to be. And it usually begins this sequence with ignorance. And because of ignorance, there is uh, karmic action. And because of karmic action, there is 
consciousness, because of consciousness, body and mind, and because of body and mind, there are the six sense bases, because of the six sense bases, contact, because of contact, feeling, because of feeling, craving, because of craving, clinging, because of clinging, becoming, because of becoming, birth, sickness, old age, and death. And, and that's the, called the forward order, or anuloma. Then there's the reverse order, or patiloma. But with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance comes the cessation of volitional formations. With the cessation of volitional, volitional formations, cessation of consciousness, etc. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. So when these factors cease, then all the other factors cease. So with the ceasing of ignorance, that's the equivalent of attaining arahantship. When you attain ignorance, so the arahant is not ever reborn because it's made an end of the dependent origination and the whole cycle breaks down. <clears throat> Seeing thus bhikkhus, the uninstructed noble disciple, or oh, sorry, start again. Seeing thus bhikkhus, the instructed noble disciple, sutva arya ravaka, experiences revulsion towards form, revulsion towards feeling, revulsion, this is Nibida, revulsion towards perception, revulsion towards volitional formations, revulsion towards consciousness. So that's the, the five aggregates. Experiencing revulsion, he becomes dispassionate. Through this passion, his mind is liberated. When it is liberated, there comes to be the knowledge, it is liberated. He understands destroyed his birth, the holy life has been lived, what has been done has been done, there is no more for this state of being. So this paragraph again is loaded um, with, with teaching. Now he started that, the, the, this is that, that's the end of the sutta. So the Samyutta suttas tend to be quite short. So he started the sutta by talking about the uninstructed um, common folk. And now he's talking about how the instructed noble disciple sees it. And he develops Nibida towards all five aggregates. The body, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, consciousness. You know, the, the, the five aggregates. Nibida is developed towards them. And then... Because of Nibbida, this is another sequence that occurs often uh, in the suttas. Nibbida viraga nuluti. This is the, the kind of three steps to enlightenment. There's first Nibbida, where one begins to develop a detachment, a, a disengagement from the process of samsara. And that leads to viraga which is this passion. That's a quite literal translation. It works well. Raga is passion. And we is like a negative, a cutting away, ending. So we raga. So be, having become disenchanted and the passion uh, fades, so which is the kind of the desire, the second noble truth, the craving that drives the whole samsaric experience fades and uh, dissolves, and then the mind can experience Vimuti, or liberation. And Vimuti is another word for awakening or enlightenment. And it means, uh, literally means breaking of the, the bonds. Vimuti is like a bond or a fetter. And the we is, again, the same prefix, cutting or ending or negative prefix. It also means something like emancipation. So the um, the mundane use of the word vimuti would be the you know, emancipation of a slave. The slave is set free. It's vimuti. <clears throat> so this uh, this particular sequence uh, nibida. Um, 
in Raga Vimukhi is quite important. Now, so what comes before that is Yatha Bhuta Nanadasana, knowledge and vision of things as they are. <clears throat> so in sometimes in expanded series, you have that Yatha Bhuta Nanadasana, Nibida Viraga Vimuti. There is a teaching of, about the, um, the stages of, uh, of insight that it's found in, one, in another sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya, the Relay Coach Sutta, just in brief. And it is, was greatly expanded in the commentaries. And the whole Vasudhimaga is structured around that framework. And in modern times, the Burmese teacher Mahasi Sayadaw you know, work, worked primarily with that structure. His, his Probably his best book, The Progressive Insight, is also dealing with it. It deals with the stages the mind goes through in the course of doing vipassana and developing insight until this until uh, enlightenment is reached. And one of the uh, one of the stages is uh, nibbida nosati, the contemplation of nibbida. And where that comes into the sequence is after the meditator sees in a really profound way, sees impermanence, sees the falling away of phenomena, of both bodily and mental phenomena are impermanent, they're, they're, they're coming to cease all the time. Then uh, that, that leads to a, uh, first of all, a feeling of um, uh, an unpleasant series of, of realizations, that knowledge of misery, knowledge of fearfulness, knowledge of danger. And this could be called, uh, and I think it's equivalent to what the Christian mystics call the dark night of the soul. What happens is that the, the meditator sees the reality of samsara, but it's not yet seen beyond it. And there's a, a sense of everything's falling apart. The body's rotting away underneath and the mind is just constantly flickering in and out. There's not nowhere to stand, nothing to rely on. And that can be quite uh, frightening. There's a sense of, of fear that can cause the meditator to back up, to draw away from that. And people can get stuck there. So this is actually quite important in, in the practice that to um, develop a, 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 fear, a fearlessness, to have a kind of a warrior spirit. You know, the way out is down and through. You have to face the the uh, the ogre under the bridge. You know, you've got to just keep going. Because there is another shore, there is an other side to it. <clears throat> and that begins with the um, the uh, realization of nibida. You know, the reason it, the reason it's frightening is because you're attached to it. You know, you, you're attached to the body and mind. This is me, this is mine, but it's there's nothing here it's substantial. It's all falling apart. Well, this is scary. But then when you develop that detachment, you say, oh, it's falling apart. You know, that's, what, that's what it does. And there, there's a, a calmness you know, when, when just watching it dissolve. And that leads to, you know, Viraga Vimuti. In the stages of insight, this um, latter part of the process is also uh, uh, sunk, uh, is a uh, sankaru peka, the uh, equanimity about formations. 
This is when the mind has gone through that whole process but hasn't yet lighted upon Nibbana. And uh, there's a great calmness or peacefulness. It's a, it's a profoundly peaceful state. And it's said to be very, just to sit in that state is very healing for body and mind. And has many blessings. And it's, it's when the meditation has reached a certain stage of uh, fulfillment or perfection that the um, meditation proceeds flawlessly without effort. One has no sense of trying or pushing anymore. It's just happening. You're just sitting there and it's and just going on of its own accord. But that's not yet enlightenment. What we could say of it is that equanimity about formations is um, the, the highest stage one can reach by striving. There's nothing to do anymore. Uh, the mind will enlighten upon Nibbana or it won't. And one can repeat this cycle many, many times before the mind lights upon Nibbana, depending on your paramis and your kama. It's compared to um, the way ancient mariners would tell if they were close to land, they would release a crow, a land-finding crow. They would keep these birds in cages on the ship and if they thought they were close to land, they'd release a crow and they'd watch which way it went. So it goes out to the north, it doesn't find any land, it comes back to the ship. It rests a little bit, then it tries again to the east. And finally, it goes in some direction, it doesn't come back. So they know there's land in that direction. So the mind goes out like a land-finding crow, searching for the far shore. And it either finds it or it doesn't. If it doesn't, it returns to its resting place. And the uh, returning to this particular sutta, the, um, the import of this sutta is to make the point that the uh, qualities of impermanence and emptiness and imperfection or suffering need to be seen in the mind and not just in the body. They should be relatively evident in the body and more subtly so in the mind. And what prevents us from easily seeing it in the mind is an attachment to the processes of mind as self. That there's a sense of this me, this is me, I'm thinking. I'm aware, I'm perceiving, rather than seeing it as a, as a momentary process. Right. So that's uh, Sutta from the Samyutta Nikaya. I'll leave it at that. Sadhu, 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 Sadhu,